Okay guys, so just got done replacing the thermostat on a 2004 Pontiac Montana 3.4 liter engine, 3400. Um, I believe it's the same from 99 to 2005 on the Chevy Venture, Oldsmobile, Bravado, um, Monte Carlo. Pretty much the same deal, same engine setup as those. So most GM 3400s, 99 to 2005. Uh, reason for this video is there's a bunch of other videos showing you how to do the thermostat. I know this because I already seen them already, but giving this one to you guys because there's a couple things you're going to want to look out for that I wasn't thinking about and other videos didn't mention uh, when I did this. First is as you're going to remove this here, you're going to need to remove the coolant tank just for ease. Um, there's just a clip that goes on here that I still got to put on and it kind of slides in to the fender housing there uh, You're going to remove the uh, air intake assembly here and you're going to need to remove the throttle body and detach the speedometer cables Other videos show you how to do that. Just going through that for purpose sake so you can understand where I'm getting at See that tube right here This is called the crankcase ventilation tube not to be confused with the PCV valve, which, you know, in, you know, everywhere else in the world is a crankcase ventilation tube. The PCV valve goes one place. This crankcase ventilation tube comes out extremely difficult when you're trying to put it up here in some cases, but it goes back behind the engine to the valve cover behind the coils, the ignition coils here, and it's straight back right here about six inches down on the valve cover. You'll only see that if you take the mounting brackets off here. See that bolt right there and the bolt right there for, and those are 13 mil or 10 millimeters rather, I'm sorry, for the mounting bracket for the ignition coil. And I didn't take it off all the way. I just kind of pried it back so I can get my hand back there to reinsert this tube, which is very hard PCV plastic, which can break very easy. I got lucky in this case that it didn't break, but this tube can comes out really easy when you're detaching it from here without realizing it. And you're gonna be like, what the hell, where does it go? So it's straight back. If you're looking at the engine, follow the tube straight back. It does a curve, like a short curve right here. And then it goes in to the back of the crankcase which is right there at the valve cover of it gasket. So if you move this bracket, lift it up, reach your hand straight back here about six inches down, feeling through the valve cover, you'll feel the hole that that goes into. Then you can guide that back in, okay? Second thing, these GMs, and I guess a lot of Fords too, have these crappy vacuum lines that are the hard plastic. Here, at the fuel pressure regulator valve, this broke on me when I was putting everything back together. All right, so this is another one that you gotta figure out where it goes to. The line kinda carries on right here, and I'm trying to wiggle it right here so you can see. It goes back right behind this ignition coil or ignition um, module. Underneath it, it plugs right in to the top of the uh, valve cover, just so you know. So it's another vacuum line that plugs right in. And again, I wouldn't have saw that unless I moved that ignition coil bracket up and lifted it up, and that was how I was able to access it. It actually broke. Um, so I just got a vacuum line connector thing right there that I did. You're not gonna find this unless you go to GM or something. So I just found another vacuum line that I you know, slid in there, snug it in to get that going. Uh, just wanted to let you guys know about that. This thing effing sucks. Just sell it. If you can't afford to sell it like me, it sucks. But those are the couple things that you need to look out for when you're taking everything apart. Be very wary of these vacuum lines as you detach them because they break extremely easily. They're super brittle, okay? That's all I got for you guys. Thanks.